Jeremiah chapter 21 the word which came unto Jeremiah from the Lord when King Zedekiah sent unto him pasture now if you go back to chapter 20 where we were last night now pasture the son of Emmer the priest and go to uh, chapter 21 Pasher the son of Melchiah. It's not the same guy. And Zephaniah, the son of Masiah, the priest. So, as we talked about last night, Jeremiah is a priest. Jeremiah has been street preaching in the temple of the priest. Now, in his ministry, the king has been sending the priests and we learned from yesterday that they're not pleased with Jeremiah the city that he come from is not pleased his familiar friends his family is not pleased and even they have said well you know for Jeremiah it's not gonna last Inquire, I pray thee, of the Lord for us. What's wrong with the priest? I'll tell you what's wrong. It, it happened with, with uh, King Saul. God's not answering them. God's not speaking to them. Ahab, he's got 400 priests and they're, and they're prophesying of Baal. That even he knows the false prophecies. For Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, maketh war against us. If so be that the Lord will deal with us according to his wondrous work like he did with Egypt, like he did with the book of Judges. That he may go up from us. Now, without going back, when Jeremiah has been told to go preach in the gates, there has been a commandment for Jeremiah to preach in the gate where the kings and the people go and come out. In and out. There are kings there. And what we see in verse 2 is the fact that Zedekiah and the priest have not heard a word that Jeremiah has preached. Because Jeremiah has been preaching doom and gloom. The enemy's coming. Unless you repent, unless you turn from your ways, this city is going to burn a fire. And the pastor from chapter 20 smites Jeremiah. How dare you preach them words? Now Nebuchadnezzar is on the scene. The Babylonian army is there. I'm one them I'm the type of person unless it actually happens right then and there. I don't know what you call that. Then said Jeremiah to them, Thus shall you say to Zedekiah. The Zedekiah is not there. He sends the priest. And you got to wonder, are they God's priests? God's not speaking through them. What kind of priests are they? They false priests? God's not using them priests to speak to Zedekiah. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel. Behold, I will turn back the weapons of war that are in your hands. That's not what the king's going to want to hear. Wherefore ye fight against the king of Babylon, against the Chaldeans, which besiege you without the walls. There they are. 
I will assemble them into the midst of this. Go ahead and fight the Babylonians. Fight the Chaldeans. And I myself will take the Babylonian and the Chaldean army and fight against you. And they will be inside this wall. They will come into this city. That's the God of Israel. He's the God of Israel. See it? He's coming inside Jerusalem with the enemy. And I myself will fight against you, Zedekiah, and Judah, and Jerusalem, with an outstretched hand, and with a strong arm, even in anger, even in fury, and even in great wrath. You don't have God on your side. You're in big trouble. Now let me tell you something. If this is the God of Israel, and he is doing it to his own people for their sin, what is he going to do with the people who are not his people, the Gentiles, and their cities, cities and their sins? What's he going to do with the nation called America that is against God, against the word, and have other gods and other religions? That if God does not go against this country in anger and fury and wrath, he will have to apologize to Zedekiah and the inhabitants of Judah. And God ain't apologizing. What do we learn from Jeremiah? If God does it to his own people, wait till he handles those who are not his people. Now Judah and Jerusalem and Israel have all sinned gross and detestable sins where they have not repented and have not gotten right with God. Destruction, judgment, anger, fury, wrath. I will smite the inhabitants of the city, both man and beast. And they shall die of great pestilence. Now, you can imagine if you were to carry that message to the President of the United States. You imagine what the reaction would be. And afterwards, saith the Lord, I will deliver Zedekiah, the king of Judah and his servants, and the people, such as left in this city from the pestilence, from the sword, and from the famine, into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, into the hand of their enemy, into, into the hand of those that seek their life. And he shall smite them with the edge of the sword. He shall not spare them, neither have pity nor mercy. I mean, the wages of sin is death. It's not God doing it. It's the sin. God wants mercy. God wants grace. God wants to bless Jerusalem. But he can't bless them if they're living in open and unconfessed sin. He can't bless them when they're giving to Baal and the Queen of Heaven. And unto this people thou shalt say, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I set before you the way of life and the way of death. That almost sounds like what I was preaching this morning. Amazing how God does that. Now here's life and death. Ready? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. No. That's not what's written there. It's not the same salvation that is today, it is back in Jeremiah's time. The salvation of Jeremiah right now for the people of Jerusalem, this is the salvation. Not to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, but he that abideth in the city shall die by the sword. And by famine and by pestilence. 
He that goes out and falls to the Chaldeans that besiege you, he shall live, and his life shall be unto him for a prey. Here's the salvation of life and death in Jeremiah's time for Jerusalem. If you don't go to the Chaldeans, to Babylon, you're going to die by sword, by famine, by pestilence. Get yourself out of your house, put your hands in your in the air, and surrender yourself to Chaldeans, and go to Babylon as a captive, and you'll live. Now that is the way, the truth, and the life of Jeremiah in the time of Zedekiah. That will give them life. They will survive. Some will come back with Ezra and Nehemiah. Now, they're not Christians. They're Hebrews. They're Jews. But God has put forth to show you that there are differences in dispensations. Jeremiah is not in the streets preaching to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He's in the streets saying, hey, all right, here comes the Babylonian army. Go out to them, surrender yourselves, and let them take you to Babylon. Or if you stay here, you're going to die by famine, by war, by pestilence. That's it. In the time of Noah, what was Noah's salvation? Go out to the Babylonians and let the Babylonians take you to Babylon. There was no Babylon. There was no Chaldeans. God told Noah, build an ark. And some foolish idiots in America, oh, uh, that's for us to build an ark. <laughs> that's not for us. You got your dispensation. Can you imagine what God's going to get to you when you when you charge for, for emissions and all that for something that's not even fit for you? That, the, the ark encounter is something to show how completely dispensational we're out of whack. Somebody did not study to show themselves approved under God because they built an ark and they weren't told to build an ark. In the tribulation period, it is by works and faith and the law. Not only do you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ in the tribulation period, but you've got to believe by works and you've got to believe by the law in the tribulation period. Not now. In each different dispensation, the Bible tells us to study, there is a different means of salvation, and the salvation of Jeremiah 21 is go with the Chaldeans. Now, you know how hard that is for the, for the, the Hebrews? I want you to go to a land that's not your land. Because I'm angry with you. That'd be like asking an American today to give up being American and go somewhere else. I don't want to have many Christians God said, hey, I want you to go out to Michigan. No, I'm staying in America. And then their Christian life is a failure. And if they don't go with the Chaldeans to Babylon, their life is a failure. For I have set my face, God's face, against this city for evil. Why? Every single street, there's an altar to a fallen God. The temple has been violated by God. There is this filth. There may be uh, places of tarot cards, places of false worship, just religious, religion. On every street. They have forsaken the word of God. They have forsaken the temple of God. They have forsaken God. I can only imagine. Vile and filthiness. That's going on in Jerusalem. That has brought God to judge the city. That the only salvation you have in Jeremiah 21 is get out of the city. That's the same thing of Lot. 
lot. The only way you're you're going to survive is you and whatever family that will go with you. Get out of Sodom. Noah. The only way for you and your family and anybody else to, to, to pass the judgment of God is if you get in that ark. And when the, when the tribulation period's here and the Antichrist, the only way for the salvation of the Jew in the tribulation period is you get out of the city and you head to that place prepared. Revelation chapter 12. Now whether it be so a preacher, wherever that place is, you better get out. You better go. You better pray that your flight be not in the Sabbath. Hey, that sounds like the law to me. And not for good, saith the Lord. It shall be given to the hand of the king of Babylon. And he, he shall burn it with fire. Why? It's a cleansing. The only way God can cleanse Jerusalem of the filthiness of the sins of man, you got to burn it. You know, if you've got a sliver in your finger and you want to get a needle, take that. you got to put that needle in the fire. And that sterilizes that needle. That you don't put no infection in your, your finger. And God's I gotta sterilize that city. Even if I gotta kill everybody who stays in it. Now there'll be some that would be left in the city. And touching the house of the king of Judah. Say, hear ye the word of the Lord. Now, touching the house of the king of Judah, is that his family or is that his physical health? Today, the Baptists would say it's the physical house. And yet, it's talking about the family. Because look, old house of David. That's not talking about the wood, the nails, the bricks. That the Baptists have got it all messed up. That some even think, oh, we're in the house of the Lord. No, you're not. That's been destroyed. That throughout the book of Acts, they went house to house to house. And that throughout the book of Acts and throughout church history, before we had the automobiles and gasoline, you may have had a, a house where they met to worship, and two or three blocks away, you may have had another house they met for worship, and three or four or five blocks away, you may have had another, because they couldn't travel by car, by vehicle, that they had houses to houses to houses, and how can you say, we've got the house of God, where there were multiple houses given to God? And that the house here is not a building, it's the family, and it runs back to David, not King Saul. O house of David, thus saith the Lord. Execute judgment in the morning. And deliver him that is spoiled out of the hand of the oppressor. What's that? You overtax someone. You're overcharging someone. You're overbilling someone. You're charging them too much rent. Relieve them. Give them a credit. Give them some help. You know, people complain about taxes. You know, that's one of the marks of the, the Antichrist. You'll be coming in with taxes. Least my fury go like fire and burn that none can quench it. That's hell. Because of the evils you do. You know what one of the evils God's doing? 
and, and you know, the ser some churches they put the series as oh adultery, 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 adultery. You don't work. You don't work. You don't work. You know what one of the sins that God says is a sin? You're overcharging the people. You're giving them no breaks. You got them under burdens. You're not paying them enough to live and survive. At the judgment seat of Christ and the great white throne judgment, I'm telling you, my friend, there'll be employers that will have to stand for judgment. You didn't pay your employees enough money to survive. The governments will be charged. You overtaxed your people. You know, America began its the Boston Tea Party. We're not going to be overcharged by the taxes of, of, of England over our tea. We're going to revolt. We're going to have a, a war against England for taxes. And do you realize how many taxes our government has put on us? You know, if we had stayed the same and stayed under England, we would not be as taxed as we are. Overtaxed, underpaid, God will deal with you. Behold, I am against the old habit in the valley, the rock of the plain, saith the Lord, which say, Who shall come down against us? And who shall enter into our habitat? Look at the pride. Look at the arrogant. No one's going to come and get us. We're safe and secure. We've got the structure. We've got the military. We are the ones. God said, oh, yeah. Yeah. But I will punish you according to the fruit of your doings. Ooh. They're going to get their just desserts. You don't want your just. You want mercy and grace. Say it the Lord. I will kindle a fire in the forest thereof. You know, one third of the trees in tribulation period are burnt up and shall devour all things round about it. I said, I'll put a fire. I'll take care of you. I'll reveal who you are. You don't want God angry with you. <laughs> 